Can you make fully playable games using AI? Well, in this video, if you've got 10 minutes, I'm going to show you the full step-by-step -step process to make really any game that you want in under 10 minutes using a tool made by a company that I've been working for since I graduated from school recently, mgx.dev. They've hired me to make tutorials just like this, and if you want to use their tool for free, links in the description. Let's get started. All right, before we get started creating our game, you'd think we would just go straight into MGX and start prompting, but no, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to be doing the most important thing when it comes to game making. We're going to be getting all of our assets organized and tagged, so that way, when we upload all of these assets for the AI to start using, it understands what all of the assets are and how to utilize them. Now, we could use AI to generate all of the assets, but I don't really like doing that. I like using artwork created by human developers, and one of the best game art developers out there who releases all of his stuff as Community Commons is Kenny. So we're going to be searching. Let's see. I'm, there's no way he doesn't have any pirate assets. Pirate. Bam! There we go. That looks good to me. Let's nab that completely for free. And if you want to check out his assets as well, links down in the description. He's got a lot of great ones here. Now, when you download his assets, a lot of them are just going to come in formats that the AI isn't going to understand how to utilize or work with. So one of the most important things that we need to do is we need to process all of these and get them set up so they are tagged and labeled so the AI knows what the assets are and how to utilize them in the game. We've got all of these different pirate ships and all of these different pirate ships have different damage levels. So we're going to make sure all of those damage levels are correct correctly labeled. We've got all of these tiles for land pieces, island pieces, stuff like that. We need to make sure that all of those tiles are correctly labeled so that way it knows how to stitch all of them together. And I'm even going to whip up some HTML code so that way there is a display of all of the different pieces inside of a file that clearly illustrates to the AI how each piece can be used. And I actually am going to be uploading these custom showcases and these custom custom AI compatibility files to my site, so if you want to go get these to make your own pirate game, links down in the description as well. All right, now that we have all of our assets organized, we're ready to upload these to MGX, so that way its team of agents can research them and understand exactly how to utilize them in order to build really any pirate-themed game that you would want it to build. The way that MGX works is it actually has a team of independently thinking AI agents, and each of these agents have a special task. So for instance, you have a project manager, you have a programmer, an architect, you basically have an entire organized development team here that will work together to achieve whatever goal that you give them. Now, one of the development team members on this AI agent team is a team member called Iris, and she does research, and we are going going to task her with not only researching these assets that we're going to give her, but also researching how to build a 2D game that would utilize some of the existing libraries on the internet, either with JavaScript or maybe different game engines. She's going to look at all of the different options and then create a plan of action on what she believes the best course of action would be in order to build this entire game. So here we go. We've uploaded everything and let's set Iris loose on this task. And I'm going to speed up time here because this is going to take Iris a pretty decent amount of time in order to go through all of the different research that she finds on the internet of different types of JavaScript libraries, different types of game engines that we can utilize. But ultimately, she is going to come to a conclusion and she's going to put all of her research inside of this directory so we can read it ourselves and decide what we want to do. As you can see, she's going through comparing all of the different systems to make sure that she She's choosing the best one when you actually get started developing. Now, I say she because her name is Iris and all of the different team members have like their own little character personas, but it is an AI. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have a gender, but you, you know, just they're all blobs. She's just slightly more of a female looking blob. But anyways, now that all of the research is done, you can yourself go through and see all of the information that she has gathered on the topic related to making your game. So we are now going to take all of these documents and we are going to upload them to our AI development team and we're gonna see what they can achieve. 
And the second that we give our team of AI developers this task, you can actually see all of the activities and all of the edits that they make to every different part of the project. You can see the team leader hand off tasks to the engineer, to the researcher, and they will take possession of different screens, either the editor screen or the app viewer screen, in order to make edits to any part of the project or view any part of the project that they need to view in order to get their tasks done and I actually think that it's really really cool watching them move from the app viewer where they'll actually look visually at the app and then move back to the terminal to the console to the editor where they will get any bugs that they can see in the console any error messages that they will then use to improve the project and make sure that whatever they output it is going to be as bug free and stable as possible. I actually think that this is only going to continue getting better and better and better. At a certain point, I wouldn't be surprised if we will have a playtester AI that will actually playtest the project before they mark it as complete. All right, and here we go. We have a completed project, a first iteration of our game. We're going to go ahead and play this. And this is looking pretty good. The music is working, the sound effects are working, all of the game mechanics, even though they're simple game mechanics, are working. All of these islands are actually procedurally generated because I only gave the AI individual pieces of the island that they had to learn to stick together. Uh, all of those rocks, all of those bushes, all of those different pieces of the, the island land tiles are all being stitched together in the game, creating a truly procedural map. This is pretty cool. I mean, this isn't this isn't a AAA game by any means, but I could see someone taking at least a week to create something like this in Scratch, in Unity. And this just created it in a couple of minutes. So the coolest thing about WGX is when you're done, you can publish your projects for free for everyone, all of your friends to play. And that's what I'm going to do. So again, if you want to play this, I'm going to have a link down in the description and you can play this project for yourself for free. In fact, let's go ahead and let's switch from the editor mode to the published game that we now have a dedicated link for. And here we go. Look at that. Now we've got a full screen version of the game that anybody can play from anywhere in the world on their desktop or even on their mobile phone, I would imagine. So this is impressive, but we want to take this further. And that's one of the coolest things about this. What you can do is you can continuously update this project and you can choose when to update the public version of the project for everybody else to play. So you can go back and forth from the back-end developer mode to the front-end player-facing mode in order to truly have a full pipeline, a full development pipeline where you can make changes to the game and push it to your players when you feel that the game is ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a few more features to this game. Nothing crazy, we'll keep it simple, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some basic power-ups that you can pick up. Things like health, things like coins, anything to add more of a progression feel to the game. And as you can see, after I give my AI team those tasks, they are going to start splitting up those tasks amongst each other. You can even see them tagging each other and talking to each other inside of this single centralized chat. And if you want to, you can even interrupt them. If you see them making a change or doing something that you think is wrong, you can actually talk to them while they were working and give them redirections while they are in the middle of making changes, which I think is really, really cool. So now that they've had time and they have created this new version of the project that has these new power-ups that you can pick up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play test it ourselves. We're going to see if this actually does what we wanted them to do. And it does seem like it 
works. It does seem like it works. However, I am noticing it looks like the animations for the coins are a little bit spastic. The pickup animations are are a little bit crazy. I'm not a big fan of that, but that's the beauty of MGX. Anything that we see after we play test this, we just write it down, we make a note of it, and we feed it back to our team. In fact, that's the role that we're playing on this team. We are the play tester. We are the one that's checking for errors, and we're the one that's gonna feed that back to our AI team so they can fix those errors. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to give our AI some direction. We're going to say that we played the game. We're going to say what we don't like. And they are instantly going to take those tasks and they are going to split it up and they are going to start making those fixes. And hopefully they do a good job. Being as articulate and clear about the problems that you see and any diagnostic information is extremely useful, I have found, when working with any... AI team or even a human team. So make sure when you are working with MGX, you are as articulate and clear about the things that you need done as possible. That is kind of a skill in itself, being able to fully articulate the things that you want to see done. If you can, if you can perfect that skill, you will have a much better time working with AI than people who struggle to articulate themselves. All right. And it looks like they've changed the animation. I like that much better. They made it so it's it's turning in circles instead of bobbing up and down. That's totally fine. You know what? I am about this. I think we're going to go ahead and we can publish this update to our public-facing version of the game. And look at that. There it is. Completely working. All right, well, if you want to play this game for yourself, it's a really simple game, but it really helps you understand what is possible with MGX and these AI tools. Click the link down in the description, and if you want to sign up for free to MGX's service, make sure you click the link down below. You don't have to pay anything. You can at least try it out. And I want to say thank you so much to MGX for hiring me to help people understand how to use their platform in order to make anything that you want, apps, games, and I look forward to showcasing you more tech like this that will improve your capabilities as a developer. Go check it out. Go show me what you created. And if you guys create any games yourself, make sure you put them down in the comments. I would love to see what you make. And besides that, make sure you subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.